there, my name is Miss Red Nebula, and welcome back to Planet Zoo, and back to our ape apprenticeship uh, in the career mode. I managed to take care of our errant red-ruffed lemur, who did survive barely, and is back in her habitat, and um, her habitat is... I, I didn't even check to see what gender they were. I was trying to kind of, like, get a little bit of a look around the whole zoo. I guess Zoha is probably Planko for zoo. Because uh, you come in here, and you've got the section that you come across first is three different exhibits all linked together in the middle with the water and stuff. Don't you think this whole design is really quite nice? You come up here first to the... Oops. Uh, come up here first to the uh, ring-tailed lemurs, and then... One of these is the red rough lemurs are back here, and then over here are mandrills, I believe. Mandrills. Yes. Lady baby. Lady baby. I have you paused because I don't trust you little critters not to forget to eat again, and I want to figure out what exactly it is we're doing next. Like, you go on beyond those, and you've got a couple of exhibit animals here. Uh, and I was going to, and I think I shall, go ahead and select and move these down, because our little Gila monster friend really likes getting in those crevices down underneath there. Oh, oh are those? Yeah, they're gonna be... If they're gridded, they're going to be where we can't really control the height that precisely without... Okay, what we'll do then is we'll take these guys and pull them out from this group. So if we do that, then we can move them a lot more precisely. Like so. Is there even a point to really keeping this there, though, if it's going to be that low down? Now, you know what? I am going to just take that right out of there so that we can actually see where our little guy is. Half of the fun of this is trying to find the exhibit animals. Oh wait! Oh, I see you! I see you! You're hiding! You're hiding under a rock! Okay, so you got those guys there. And I did notice that if you go back further a little bit, there is another section with a critter over here, which is a... Um, Goliath beetle, giant burrowing cockroach. And then there's a nice empty one here, so we can start our uh, our next objective by filling this one in. So, I don't know. I was looking through and I was really, really hoping for one of those co uh, not cockroaches, sorry, one of those centipedes. Unfortunately, it seems like they have a fairly um, limited number of critters that are actually available in the in this career mode. So we can't just pick whatever we want. So our choices is either like the cockroach, we've already got one of those in the zoo, so we've got the giant tiger land snail, which are awesome. And I believe Goliath frog was the other one. Gila monster who we've already got. Wee, Goliath Frog, Lesser Antillian Iguana, which we already have one of those up front. So they're limiting us so we can't just fill the zoo with a whole bunch of exhibit animals. Uh, we can put in two that we don't currently have, so I think I'm going to go with a Goliath Frog here. And I'm just going to get... Actually, it'd be nice to know... We go to the Zoopedia and it goes straight to it. Ah, perfect. It didn't do that in the beta. It actually went to just the the African buffalo, which was the first one on the list at the time, instead of going to the actual animal that it needed to. So how many of you guys can we have in there? One to two. Cool. So I can probably just put in a couple of males so I don't end up with a glut of little babas. Right, let's do this. That is a Goliath frog. What do we want? It's interesting that there's still conservation credits here in this mode, and also, I mean, I even saw them in Sandbox, even though you can just use however many you want. They're not connected to the franchise mode version of it, where there's just 
all kinds of stuff being put out there by other players, but it's still just kind of interesting. So if I get one for conservation credits, then that means that I could maybe... No, no, you can't release these guys, that's right. So it doesn't really matter. And regarding their, uh, their stats, at this point, I'm in career mode. I'm not sure how much that matters either. But we got plenty of money to play around with, so might as well go and get some nice gold stars, eh? Adopt you. And you go here. And I would really prefer if that kept my kept my filters. I just want another male. We've got a thing of sense. Silver would be better, but I don't see any males with silver. Oh, there's one. And here you go. Pretty good stats, so we'll adopt you and chuck you in there too. Alright, so that's one animal towards our thing. Let's make sure that they are well taken care of. Haven't done any research on them yet. Alright, let's get the vet on doing some research for our goliath frog here. Might actually get another vet in here too. I know I've got everything paused, so it's not like they're going to research super fast or anything, but at least they have where the research on some of the other critters is done. Okay, so giant tiger land snail, tapirs, and chimpanzees are all possibilities. Something I was looking through the various critters that we had in the animal trading, too, and well, there were, uh, there were chimps in there and tapers and a, a few others, and you still had a fairly limited number of different animals that you could get for this particular cat. Stop fussing around back there. And so you had a, a limited number of animals that were available for this, but chimps were one of them. Gorillas were not, for whatever reason. You'd think if we were doing a, an entirely simian-based zoo that there would be, you know, less lemurs and more gorillas. Oh well. That's okay, we've got our orangutans. Cat! Somebody's in a playful mood. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but eh. Anyway, so I was thinking that we'd probably go ahead and put in a, a chimpanzee exhibit as kind of a big one, and then we could just do one more exhibit animal as another small one. But I do want to definitely get the research going for the goliath frog. And let's see. Because that's occurring, I am also going to hire a secondary vet who is going to not do any research. So let's go ahead and do that first. I know, I know, just doing everything in, uh, everything in pause mode, but I get really paranoid when I've got lemurs that fail to eat. That's... Vendor, 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 vendor. Vendor face. Right, so who did we just hire? Nobody has a work zone, that's fine. High workload. Well, yeah, you're literally the only one. So you're the one who we already had. Going to the research center. My workload is very heavy today. Oh, poor baby. You know what? You do nothing but research. That's your job. You're, you actually look like an Alfie. You definitely look like you could be an Alfie. Look at that hairdo. Right. So our other one... Well, I guess they won't do any research unless I assign them to it. So there's that. Ah... Uh, how much do we have to worry about diseases just yet? I'm so nervous something's going to end up getting sick, and I don't have literally anything researched. I think that the different animals do say what kind of diseases that they're... that they can get, I think? Research status... Gonna... You're not gonna tell me. Hmm... 
because it'd be really handy to know what sort of diseases that are possible with a critter to see so that you know what diseases to research, you know? Uh, might be missing something there, but that's okay. I'm going to hope and assume that that's not something that I gotta really deal with here in the tutorial zoo. Where is those critters we just put down? These guys? The froggies. I see a froggy. You are huge! Now I'm gonna unpause just for a second. You're huge and so cute! I love you! I want to make sure that we put down a thingy for these guys. Interesting when you're in this mode you can just hear the speakers coming from all different directions. That's kind of fun. Right. So that's there, and we want it to say Goliath Froggy. I might just steal... I guess not that building. I think these ones were separate, weren't they? Yeah. I don't want to get both. Just want one. Oh, everything's all connected. Eh. That's not what we want. We just want this stuff. Let's pop that off from the group. I don't even care about the exhibits inside of it, in fact. So what's the best way to do that? I just want the building. <laughs> okay, what I'll do then for the moment is split the exhibits out from the group. And I really just want one of them. So let's take all of the bits here. I don't need the floor either. You're not gonna make it easy on me, are ya? Okay, well, what I'm going to do is pop this off as its own selection and then duplicate it ah, uh, somewhere. I think that it was that you go down here past me. These are our, uh, these are our bonobos. And then there was a nice little section over here where it went down to what looks like a brilliant spot for a chimpanzee place. But somewhere in the middle here, I was thinking that I could take and put a duplicate of this. What? Oh, it's still got that attached to it, no wonder. Okay. Stop. Stop, stop. Ah, uh, so just sticking in the middle like that is probably not going to be the best bet. Oh, it's got a speaker attached to it, no wonder. Right, I'm gonna plunk that down way the heck over here just for a second while I can figure out what I want to do with it. Cool. Where's that speaker? You go away! Okay, good. It looks good on all sides with one minor exception that we just need one of these over this side. Is it the outside? I think it's the outside I want that on. Like that. Cool. Because I was thinking, oh, I'm just plunk it down in the middle here. It's like, no, it doesn't quite work like that, does it? You have to have it uh, be in some way attached to the path. Like, you see how what's going on with these guys. So ideally, you want it to be somewhere that there's not already a path so you can build right around it. It's a little bit awkward that there's all of the paths are already built here. All right, well. Let's do a little bit of cleanup here and we'll get that rebuilt, resorted here in just a second. Because what I'd like to do is have my exhibit right smack dab in the middle there. So we will go ahead and plunk an exhibit in here. 
with this where it's in edit mode so we can put the exhibit right in. Boof. Done. Right. Exit that. And we'll move this around. The real tricky bit here is going to be getting this exactly where I want it. Does the exhibit come right down to the bottom? Yes. Okay, so... I'll just... I'm going to turn it... Not like the stuff down underneath matters because the path's going to be on top of that anyway. We'll have a path that will build out straight from this thing. Because we can do that. So if I go ahead and say... Oh, we're going to want him up just a little bit higher, aren't we? Because if we want these, these kind of paths to come right off of that... <sighs> Why's everything got to be sideways? E no. <laughs> Might almost do something like that just so it doesn't look like it's all, all kind of sideways and funky, but I do need it to be up just a smidge higher. Nope, not the exhibit. The whole thing. Whole thing. Like so. Just up a touch. And then take our path. Actually, we're going to do... Oh, I'll do this one. That'll look nice. We'll do our path. Align to grid and base the grid off of this guy. That'll give us a nice path that goes right around this and everybody be able to get to it on all sides. I think rather than square edges, let's go for the rounded edges on here. Like that. And then we can line it up the way that they kind of seem like they intended this to look in the first place. Like that. And we can almost kind of use it just as it was intended to be. Let's see. Can we attach up to you? Is this going to work? Alright, let's... One way or the other, it's kind of going to look funky, so let's just go with the same same as we've got there. That's That's all well and good. And then we can come off of here. Little trick that I like to do is you take and hold down control and it lets you break off the path so it's not always connecting onto whatever's closest like that. Because if we want to come down here and we know exactly where we want to end up, then that just makes it a little easier to get there. Same thing over here is it's a little bit hard to position it exactly up here. So we'll come down bottom here and go up from there. And I'll just move rocks around and get them where I want them to be. And then it will look lovely. Just so you know, if there's a, a building like that, if, if all of the rocks and stuff are part of a an existing group, if you just double click on them, you can get into the group to start editing it like I did. Or, like if you um, are outside of the group, I just double clicked again. Durr. If you're outside of the group, you can also click this button here to enter group edit mode. Boop. Easy. A lot of this stuff really does just take some getting used to, and obviously if you happen to have played Planet Coaster, you've got some advantages, but eh, you guys will get the hang of it really quick even if you never played Planet Coaster. And the rewards and the fact that you can just literally build whatever your heart desires is just so amazing. It's one of the best parts of these kind of games and something that Frontier is just so masterful at. I know there's been a lot of kind of kerfluffle and people upset about certain things about the game so far, but just like the amount of t the sheer amount of hours that I've put into Planet Coaster is <laughs> frankly a little alarming. <laughs> 
the end of the day, I think I've had something like, well, almost 2,500 hours in Planet Coaster. And somehow I don't see it being that much different for this game in the end. <laughs> Let's see, I'm just gonna move those down so they make a little bit more sense with the placement. Actually, no, you know what? I'm gonna move them back up to here instead. This is me making something that totally isn't an exhibit, but you can just get lost playing around with individual building pieces and stuff so easily. So be careful, because that's a that's a really good way to <laughs> end up not getting a lot of actual stuff done for a day. Let's move you over so people aren't going to be clipping through ya. That's good enough. And see, now we've got a nice little habitat for people to block up the road. And I think that's where we can put our giant snail. Not you. You're not a giant snail. So many of these things have giant or goliath in their names. Let's see. Oh, we did males for the other ones. Let's do females for this one. Silver, did they got any golds? They all silver, silver, silver. Okay, fine. Fendizu, you go there. Actually, because I haven't looked them up. Where's our... Okay. Giant land snail. How many can I have in there? One to six. Ooh. Promiscuous self-fertilization. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I should have put males in. Well, that's fun. I might just leave just one in there and see if I end up with eight or nine of them or something. Oh, gosh. See, there's a thing that, that uh, I think I mentioned this in the live stream. I don't think I mentioned it on here, but that these guys are not welcome in the United States. They're actually illegal to have as pets here. Because they breed a lot, and because they are a highly invasive species. But they're so cool, they're huge and fascinating, and are not going to have too much enrichment. Hello! They're like, like you see people holding them, and they look like bunny rabbits in their hands. See, something that I didn't do on the other one, uh, you might actually be okay. Let's see. You got, nope, nope, not okay. Let's do about 33 and pull down your humidity a feral bit. Yeah, uh, 66, no, not quite. Nope. Okay because I also have to do that for our other little fellow that we popped in over here. I got the research started for him. Oops, are we in the right spot? No. Eh, eh. Where am I? I am here. And that is... You? Goliath Frog. Alright, so your exhibit's kind of naff at the moment. Oh, you're so very close. No wonder you weren't complaining too much about it. About about 32? Okay, you're fine at 32. Good, good. That should mean that we only need to have one species, and I think that's gotta be our chimpanzees. So our spot over here is gonna be for just that. You need a sign. Not one of those, just a sign. Eh. Okay, fine. I will do it that way. Angle snap on. Turn, turn. It's one thing is if you can't see the ground and you're getting a little confused with these things, you can just turn the heat maps back off again. You can either do that by um, pressing 
up in the corner there. Um, or if you just press the H key, that's your hotkey for getting rid of the heat maps. So we can put this over to one side like so. Click on you and say giant tiger land snail. Once the research for the other stuff gets done, we can start putting that there. All right, let's have a look at chimpanzees. So social needs for chimpanzees, five to 15, and it doesn't seem to matter so much male or female. So we can have a bit of both. Can guests enter habitat? No, <laughs> definitely no. Natural habitat, Africa. 780, so we're gonna be looking at for as many animals as we want to put in here. Let's see, at least five, so we'll probably go with something like mm, seven or eight. Um, so that it's usually like whatever this number is plus a bit. It seems like it depends very much on the individual animals, but I think we can also kind of use the bonobos as an example of approximately a good size for what would be nice for these guys. I think really we can just kind of take and use up this whole space here, maybe including these trees, maybe not, I don't know. So I'll kind of like go with a viewing area that goes into it a little bit like this. I think rather than having uh, these, I like these raised platforms, but I'm gonna go with something just a little bit simpler for this one. Maybe raise, raise the platform up and go across just a little bit here. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so let's start with that. Hot key for raising that platform up like that, by the way, is U, and then the hot key for lowering the platform down is J. Just makes it a little bit easier. You can also, because right now you can see my stairs are only going one way like that. And if you want them to be able to curve, you go curved slopes over here. And then you can actually make curvy stairs, which are much nicer. It's also kind of nice to keep the angle snap on just to give you a little bit more control over what's going on. So I'll get these guys up. Uh, maybe like that. Maybe like that. And then we'll use J to get ourselves back flat again. And then just connect these guys up. Let's see. To make the path longer is the plus key, and to make it shorter is the minus key up at the top when you keyboard. But you want to be able to kind of have a little more control, something like this. That's why I like going back and forth and doing the two sides of the path separately like that, because then you can kind of see where do we want to link these guys up, just like so. Where do we want our staff to be able to get to this? Hmm. Some staff facility stuff over there, so I guess I could just have a path going around behind there, but yeah. I just have a staff section specifically for these guys kind of tucked around the back there. It's, it's not like these guys need to go home or anything like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode here. We'll get on to building the exhibit for our chimpanzees in the next one. Might do a little bit of a, a partial speed build, or if you guys just enjoy watching me build stuff a bit at a time like this, I might do just some kind of a combination of both. Let me know what you think. In any case, thanks for joining me. Feel free to like or comment, and if you want random updates from my little world of art and gaming, subscribe. If you enjoy what I do and are interested in supporting the channel, check out my Patreon. A big thank you to my current patrons. That's all for now. Bye!